Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, today we're going to carry on doing quadratic word problems. That's what we ended with last time. And then we're going to move on to quadratic inequalities and we'll see how the day goes. I've got other stuff that I can possibly do with you guys. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so quadratic word problems are basically word problems that have what two variables and there are steps to follow that will help you solve it. And I've gone through these steps before, but just in case you've missed it, let's talk about how to solve a word problem. Oh, by the way, while I've got you here, if you guys have ever missed a lesson or you want to go back and check, then all you have to do is go through to, to an ABLE platform and you'll see all the lessons listed there and you go and click on them as if you were going to click on them like you would join that lesson for the first time and you will see a recording of the lesson. Similarly, if you're watching this live now and you want to, maybe you missed something or I did something too quickly or you want to go check it, then you're welcome to go and go exactly the same method that you got to use to get here. You go back through that method again and you'll receive a recording of this video. Right, so let's talk about how to solve a word problem. These are steps that we need to follow. First of all, you need to read the problem carefully. Seriously, guys, you have to read the problem carefully. The number of times I have students that can't do a problem and they struggle, struggle, struggle. And then I say to them, what is the problem? They go, oh, they don't tell me what X is. And actually they do. That person just hasn't read carefully. Secondly, highlight what we have to solve for. I would like to stress that feel free to use highlighters, pencils, um, colored pencils, all sorts of things in the exams. Obviously, it'd be better if you made these marks on the question paper, not on the answer sheet, but highlight what you have to solve for so that you can actually make sure that you know what you're aiming at. Assign variables to unknown values, so you can let something be X or let something be Y. Then translate it into an algebraic expression. For example, X plus Y equals 3. Okay, we'll work through these examples now. Set up a system of equations and then solve, and then obviously you always check your solution. Always check your solution. Just even if it's just to make sure that it makes sense. Okay, so and then obviously you write down the final answer. So <laughs> let's try a couple of examples. So it says Sylvester has played a few games of darts. Okay, he's played a few games of darts. In the third game, Sylvester scored. 80 more than in the second game, okay? In the first game, Sylvester scored 110 less than in the third game. His total score for the first two games was 208. And if he wants an average score of 146, what must his score be on the fourth game? Hmm, okay. So let's do the steps. It said read it carefully, which we did. Now it says highlight what they want, and they want to know what must the score be on the fourth game? What must the score be on the fourth game? Okay, so the best way to do this is actually to make a little table and see what we have and what we don't have. And sorry, I do want black. So we've got first game. Okay, second game, third game, fourth game, and then average. Okay, right. And do you agree that the average, to get the average, what do we need to do? We have to add all of these and then divide by four, and then divide by four, okay? So we know that the average already they've told us is 146, 146. And again, what I'd like to suggest you do is that you maybe tick off in pencil the stuff that you use, the information that you've used, so that you can actually work out where you're going. Okay, now let's see. It says the third game Sylvester call, call scored 80 more than in the second game. Okay, so in other words, this is the second game. In the third game, he scored 80 more. Okay, I'm going to put X and Y's in a minute, okay? In the first game, he scored 180 less than the third game. And the first two scores of the first two games was 208. Okay, so let's let something be X. Let's let something be X. Shall we let the second game be X? Let's let the second game be X. Do you agree that the third game is, third game is 80 more than the second game? The third game is 
80 more than the second game. So I'm letting x be the second game. Okay. If that's the case in the third game is 80 more than the second game, so it's 80 plus x, right? Now it says in the first game, Sylvester scored 110 less than the third game. So the first game equals the third game minus 110. But what is the third game? The third game is 80 plus x. So do you agree that's 80 plus x? minus 110, which becomes x minus 30, okay? So therefore, do you agree the third game is x minus 30, okay? Then it says the score of the first two games was 208. These two add up to 208. Oh, okay, so we can do that then. This is quite cool. We can get equations. We can go x minus 30 plus x equals 208. So do you agree we could actually solve for x right now? Right now we could solve for x because we've got x minus 30 plus x equals 208. So therefore we've got 2x minus 30 is equal to 208. Sorry, I was thinking ahead. Therefore 2x is going to be 208 minus plus 30 because remember, you take it across, it becomes a plus. So 2x is equal to 238. So x is going to be 100 and 1, remainder 1, and 9, 119. Okay, so x is 119. So now we can solve for this. Now this becomes easy because, so what we're going to do is let the fourth game be y. Okay, so we're going to let the fourth game be y just so that it's not x, right? So do you agree we can now fill numbers in? Okay, so I can do, well, if that's the case, the first game is going to be 119 minus 30. Okay, 119 minus 30. So if you want, we can take out our calculators. Just to be sure, I know you guys. You guys, in the exams, you check everything on your calculator. If you could, you check 1 plus 1 equals 2. So we're going to go 119 minus 30, and you get 89. So the first game is 89. Obviously, the second game is just x, so that is 119. The third game is 80 plus 119, which is 199, right? And now they said the average score must be 146. What must be the score of the fourth game? So what do we need to do? We need to add the 89, the 119, the 199, and the y, divide it up all by four, and we get 146. So... I can do that. So let's do it with purple. I can go 89 plus 119 plus 199 plus y all divided by 4 is equal to 146. Okay. So let's simplify this by adding these three numbers together. So we're going to go 89 plus 119 plus 199 equals 407. So we've got 407 plus y over 4 equals 146. So therefore, do you agree that y is going to be 146 times by 4 minus 407? Okay, how do I get that? Well, I'm taking the 4 across Okay, and then I'm subtracting this big total here of 407. So let's go back and we're going to go, well, we've got 146 times 4 minus 407 equals, oh, that did not work, did it? 146 times 4 equals minus 407 equals, it's 177. So for his fourth game, he got a score of 177. So grade 11, I hope that you've realized now that 
You can easily do these sums as long as you take them in baby steps and you lay them out. Okay, and it's very, very, you are very much allowed to lay it out and draw pictures like I've done and put things down in tables. Okay, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's a very good method to do it. So as long as you explain what you're doing, and obviously I have used red, I've used green, I've used purple. Guys, as long as you explain what you're doing and you write it out neatly, the teacher will be happy. Okay, let's do another example. It says an annual train ticket costs a thousand rand for a single person. Okay, so we've got one person here and it costs him a thousand rand, right? For the family, yes, the dude, and we'll make it Bob, Sim Bob Simpson. So, you know, she's got lots of hair, the mommy, and then there's Bart with less hair, and then, okay, you get the gist, okay, and the baby. Right, so the family ticket is 1,000. 500 Marge, Marge Simpson, I've forgotten what the purple head woman was called. Okay, the train ticket for both the single and the family are increased by the same amount. Okay, now a single ticket price costs five sevenths of a family ticket. What was the price increase? What are we doing? We have two. Once we've read the question, we need to highlight and we want to highlight in yellow. So it says, What was the price increase? That's what we want to know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let something be X and I'm going to let this be X is be the price increase. The price, the price increase, I'm going to let 